Hello everyone, my name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, a lecturer in management accounting. Welcome to lesson two of the marginal and absorption costing uh, topic. Now, in lesson two, we are going to focus on a practical question um, so that we can be able to prepare the operating statement or the income statement using both systems, the marginal and absorption. Now, the question reads, and the question is from August 2009, the pilot paper. Question three. Sorry, uh, question one. Question one. ABC Limited manufactures and sells a single product, branded Z. The following data has, has been extracted from the budget and standard cost relating to product Z. Shillings per unit, selling price for 50, direct materials uh, cost 100, direct wages cost shillings 40, variable overhead cost shillings 25. Fixed production overhead costs are budgeted at shillings 4 million per annum. Normal production levels are expected to be 320,000 units per annum. Budgeted selling and distribution costs are as follows. Variable cost, shillings 15 per unit sold. Fixed cost, shillings 800,000 per annum. Budgeted administration costs are shillings 1.2 million per annum. The following pattern of sales and production was expected during the first six months of the year. Between January and March and between April and June. Sales in units 60,000, 90,000 respectively. Production in units 70,000, 100,000 respectively. There was no opening stock on 1st January. Required number A. Profit statements for each of the two quarters in a columnar format using Roman 1, marginal costing, Roman 2, absorption costing. And part B, reconcile the profits reported by the two methods in part A above. End of question. Now, we are given a question and this question is of two periods and there are two periods in a year. Um, and these two periods are not for the whole year, they are for, the, for half a year. So therefore, we are going to work with half a year in terms of period cost. For example, the production, the administration, selling and distribution. So especially the fixed cost, which are period cost, we're going to take them for only half a year. Then we share into two periods, which are three months, three months. So if you're given a cost for a whole year, we are going to uh, work with only half which is six months. Then uh, we are going to have a, a format to assist us to determine the cost we are going to use to value our production and our uh, inventories. So you can have here summary. So we have uh, details, we have marginal, and we have absorption. So we have the first item being the materials, so direct materials, then you have direct labor, and we have uh, the uh, overheads, production overheads, so which is variable, and we have uh, the fixed uh, stock of, um, so variable production overheads, and you have fixed production overheads. Now, the materials uh, cost per unit, uh, we are being given there shillings 100, so under both, shillings 100. The wages or direct labor, we have shillings 40, shillings 40 under both. Variable production, shillings 25, 25 under both. But the fixed production overheads, uh, we do not charge under the marginal, we only charge under the absorption. So therefore, we are going to calculate for the absorption only. We have been told that a fixed production overhead cost are budgeted to be shillings 4 million per year. This is going to be uh, 4 million 
then you divide by the normal production level for the whole year, 320,000 units. So you divide by 320,000. This is the working, so which is going to give us an amount of, should you divide this by, so 4 million divided by 320. So this is 4 million divided by 320,000. This is going to give us shillings 12.5. So that tells you, as we add to get the cost per unit, this is the CPU cost per unit uh, or the production cost. So we have 140 plus 25, which is 165. And is the same figure we have on this side, apart from uh, the 12.5 we are going to add. That gives us 177.5. That is uh, what we... Be. So this is now VPC, the variable cost per unit, while this one is the TPC, the total production cost, uh, of course, per unit. Now, <coughs> we are going to now present these into income statement under marginal costing and then absolute costing. We are going to start with the marginal costing. So we'll have, this is income statement. This is marginal costing. And then you have two periods. So as we, we have the details, we have the January to March, and you have April to June. We have this. So January to March, then we have uh, the February, uh, as in uh, April to June. Now <coughs> we start with the first item uh, I had given. I had given the structure uh, in lesson one. So we'll begin with the sales. So sales will take the number of units multiplied by the price. Like we have the number of units sold on the first period is 60,000 units. We multiply by the 450 price. So we have 60,000 each at 450. We can have the shillings in thousands. So that now we can uh, work with reduced cost or reduced uh, figures. So we have 60 multiplied by 450. This gives us 27,000. The next uh, period, we, the sales are 90,000. So this is 90,000 at 450. So 90 times 450. This is 4,500. Remember the figures are reduced to thousands. Then here we have, so less. Under the marginal costing, we said that we less the variable production cost. So this is going to be, uh, we have the variable production cost. So in this case, we have, in terms of opening stock, uh, production, and even the closing. So we have opening stock. We have production and we have a closing stock. Now, the opening stock, we have been told that there was no opening on 1st of January. So, therefore, this is going to be dash. But we do have production in, the, in the, this period. The production is actually uh, 70,000 units. This is 70,000 units each at the VPC, which is 165. So this is 70 multiplied by 165. This is giving us 11,550. 
And then we need to balance. Uh, we argue that if we have produced 70 and you have sold 60, automatically there is some 10,000 that has been uh, left and sold. So 10,000 each at 165, then this is, uh, will just give us uh, 1,650. So 10 times 165, this is 1650, which need to be subtracted so that you can get what you call the this is <coughs> this is uh, cost. So let's say so variable uh, cost, or we can say variable production cost because we need to be very specific on which cost is this. So this is variable production cost, which is eleven five fifty. Eleven. 550, we subtract 1650, this will give us 9,900, that if you subtract from the sales, you'll get now what's called the gross contribution, contribution which is 27,000. Minus the 9,900, this will give us 17,100. That's for the first period. The second period, uh, which is April, uh, we do have, actually, the closing stock of this first period is the opening stock of the second period. So therefore, this is 10,000, each at 165, giving us 1650. Then the production in this second period is a hundred thousand so this will be a hundred thousand each at um, 165 then of course this will be sixteen thousand five hundred so 100 times 165 this is sixteen thousand five hundred then we have the closing stock in terms of balancing that if we had 10 uh, plus 100 that is 100 110 this is 110 and we sold 90 then 110 minus 90 that means we did not sell 20,000. So 20,000 each at 165. This will be times 165. This is 3,300. And which you are going to subtract to get the variable cost of production, which is 1650 plus 16,500. Then you subtract the, the three, you get 14,850 that if you subtract it from 40,500, you subtract it from that, you get a gross contribution of 25,650. That is now the gross uh, contribution. Then we subtract the other variable, which is we've been given their variable, uh, variable uh, selling and distribution. So you can less here. So variable selling and distribution now this one has been given in terms of um, shillings 15 per unit sold this is always in terms of what we are selling so this is 60,000 each at 15 while this one is um, 90,000 each at 15 so 60 times 15 gives us 900 which are going to subtract well, uh, the, uh, 90 multiplied by 15, this will give us 1,350, which you're going to subtract. So if you subtract now this, we'll get what we call the net contribution. This is net contribution, which is 17,100. You subtract 900, this gives us 16,200. Well, this one is um, 25,650. You subtract 1350. This gives us 24,300. That is a net contribution. Uh, as at now, we have dealt with all the variables. The production and then the production cost, which is variable. So now we can go to the fixed cost. We can say here, less fixed uh, costs, which you have quite a number. Starting with the production, so you have um, fixed production overhead. Now, the fixed production overhead has been given 
there uh, as a cost of 4 million is exactly what we used here, 4 million. But that 4 million is for the whole year. While this is only 3 months, 3 months. So if we take 4 million, we divide by the 4 periods. Or either, you know, these are two periods and we have the other two periods. In, in, in a year, we have the four, it's like quarters. We have four quarters. It should be divided by four. It's like saying for every quarter, it's going to be one million. So we come at half year, 1,000, simply because we have put our figures in thousand. We reduce them. So the same story here, this is um, a thousand. Then we have um, the fixed selling and distribution. So you have fixed selling and distribution this is an 800,000 per annum 800,000 for the whole year so if you take 800 we divide by 4 because of the four periods this will be 200 200 these are two equal periods these are period cost then you have the fixed admin so fixed admin cost which are being given there at a cost of um 1.2 million per annum. So 1.2 million, if we divide by 4, that will give us 300 shillings. So 300 in thousands, so 300. So now if you are to subtract this from the net contribution, we should be able to get now our net profit. 16,200, we subtract 1,500 fixed cost. So this gives us 14, 700. Then 24, 300. We subtract the same 1,500. This will give us 22,800. So this is our net profit. So net profit. Look at now. The This is the, the format of uh, the marginal costing, which actually have... Um, used the variable cost of production, which is a variable production cost, and then we have uh, subtracted the variable selling and distribution, and then from there we have um, subtracted this period cost, which are all fixed, and they are per period. Remember, this is the first period, which is three months, this second period, which is three months, and therefore we have to make sure that our fixed costs are commensurate to the period. So that is what we have done. Then we would do the same now for the absorption costing. So we can have here absorption costing 